Hi, my name is Eamon Costello. I'm CEO of Patient Empower, and welcome to our video tutorial about Patient Empower. We're dedicated to empowering better outcomes in lung disease by providing patients, caregivers, and healthcare professionals with the tools and insights to help them improve treatment and care in pulmonary fibrosis and lung transplant. We're accelerating research by working with leading healthcare institutions and researchers from around the world, and we're helping patients be recruited into upcoming clinical trials. We've been recognized as the leading solution for pulmonary fibrosis patients, judged by leading pulmonologists, patient advocates, the American Lung Association, and the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation by winning the IPF Catalyst Challenge in Chicago earlier this year. So what is Patient Empower? At its core, it's an app for patients and caregivers to help you record anything related to your lung health. It's available on almost any iPhone, iPad, Android phone or Android tablet device. And anyone with an interstitial lung disease, including pulmonary fibrosis, IPF, can use it. We also have a version available for lung transplant patients. And we have a care or mentor version of the app where you can get loved ones to see how you're doing. So what value does it provide for you? Well, it gives you more information and control of your pulmonary fibrosis. It helps you better engage with your healthcare team, and it helps you find clinical trials that may be relevant to you. And it helps you, through your data, contribute to research into pulmonary fibrosis and lung transplant. How do we do this? Well, we allow you to track a wide variety of things related to your lung health. That's everything from objective data, so things like what's your lung function like, your oxygen saturation, but also subjective quality of life factors, such as how breathless you are, how much cough have I experienced, what's the severity of the cough. And the two of these in combination are very important because where previously you may have felt unwell, you did not necessarily have the data to back this up. We're helping you combine the objective data in terms of numbers, in terms of your PFTs, along with the subjective data, how you're feeling. We've carried out numerous studies, both with academic medical centers and patient groups, one of which was with the PF Warriors of Texas. We conducted this study during 2017, and we've had scientific abstracts from this published at the major scientific meetings, the American Thoracic Society and the European Respiratory Society. From that study, we found 100% of the participants wanted to continue using patient and power and would recommend it to fellow pulmonary fibrosis patients. 100% of participants thought the effect on their pulmonary fibrosis was positive, and 88% of people felt it gave them a greater sense of control in managing their lung health. Our Facebook page has countless stories of people using patient and power and telling their stories about how it helps them and helps research into the disease. So let's start by looking at the home spirometry element of patient and power. So a home spirometer is similar to the clinic PFTs that you do, albeit it's a much smaller and more portable device that you can test with at home. The key factor it measures for pulmonary fibrosis is your forced vital capacity or the amount of air that you can forcibly exhale in one blow. It also measures other parameters, such as the force expiratory volume in one second, or FEV1, that is more relevant in lung transplant. And at the end of the measurement, it allows you to add a journal, for example, recording how you feel when you carried out the pulmonary function test. So here's a video showing it in action. So this is a nurse specialist carrying out a pulmonary um, a pulmonary function test. So you blow into it forcibly like you would in the hospital. And at the same time, the app responds to this, turning the pinwheel. You blow for about six seconds or as long as you can. And at the end of the reading, the results are recorded in terms of your forced vital capacity. We also have integrated pulse oximetry so we integrate with a non-in Bluetooth pulse oximeter. But if you don't have the non-in oximeter, you can type in the results from any oximeter you have at home. 
It, of course, records your oxygen saturation and your heart rate. And at the end of the reading, you can also record if you're on oxygen and what flow rate of oxygen you're on. Other objective data that can be recorded, we also have an integrated blood pressure monitor that automatically sends the data to the patient and power app. We have a weighing scales that's fully integrated. And like I mentioned, you can also record your oxygen flow rate and body temperature. You can also record your medications. So you can put in your antifibrotic medications if you're on them or any medications that you would be on for your interstitial lung disease. If you have had a lung transplant, you can record your immunosuppression medications and any other medications that you may be on as well. You will get reminders for these at the appropriate time if you so wish. You can also record subjective data such as breathlessness. Uh, so for example, here we use a breathlessness scale called the MMRC. It's used internationally and it's a, it's a common way that people use to record how breathless they are. It's on a scale of zero to four, zero being I only get breathless with strenuous exercise, and four is I'm too breathless to leave the house or I'm breathless when dressing. So it's a good idea to record your breathlessness level every so often or any other symptoms or concerns that you have. We have a health journal screen where you can record various other symptoms. You can type in free text or you can take photos if there's something of concern to you. For example, a rash that you would like to keep a record of. You can also record your activity level. So whether you have an iPhone, which connects with the Apple Health app on your phone by carrying your phone around, or on an Android phone, you can connect with Google Fit or a Fitbit, you can record the steps and distance you're taking on a daily basis. You can create reports to bring to your healthcare appointments. So from within the dashboard screen in the app or in the, in the My Data screen, there's a share button where you can click share, create a custom report from any period that you want, and then you can email it to yourself or to a family member. You can also invite family members to view your patient power data. So you would click the plus button within the app, click to add a friend, add in the friend's name, and then you would, then you would email them a link to download the patient power app where they would get a read only view of your data. Over the coming months, we'll be presenting you with new ways that we'll be visualizing your data. So we're starting to overlay the objective data with the subjective data to see, for example, see, for example, how your force vital capacity impacts your breathlessness, your fatigue, or your anxiety level. We also, for example, when you're looking at your oxygen saturation, are starting to look at whether you've been doing activity, so steps around the time that you recorded the reading, and also what distance above sea level you are. For those that live in mountainous or high areas, this is very important in terms of their oxygen saturation level. During next year, we will also be rolling out a feature whereby we'll be interpreting your data and highlighting if there's anything of concern where you should be contacting your doctor. We're working with leading pulmonologists and academic medical centers in developing this software. And we're also working with the FDA in terms of getting this software approved. Within the patient and power app and newsletters we send, we'll be sending you relevant information such as pulmonary rehab webinars. So this is one that we did with Dr. Noah Greenspan a number of months back, and it provides a very informative uh, session for you to ask questions of leading experts in pulmonary fibrosis. Patient Empower is producing a digital biobank, which is collecting a wide variety of different data types. So as well as the data such as your pulmonary function data uh, that we've mentioned, 
we're also recording air quality. We combine all of this data in an anonymized way and use it for research purposes. So during 2019, we'll be publishing a lot of data and a lot of research articles into, for example, air quality and its impact on various lung diseases. For every reading that's recorded within Patient Empower, we're taking the corresponding air quality reading at that time. We're taking this from the airnow.gov uh, website and using the nearest air quality monitoring station to you, we find out what the air quality like is, is near you. Within the Patient Empower app, when you open it, you can see the air quality right now near you as well. We'll also, for research purposes, be able to break it down by different types of air quality, whether it be ozone or different sized particles that may affect your health. And we'll also be able to break it down into reports by different geographic areas. So, for example, this is a breakdown of the air quality in Milwaukee during May and June this year. We're heavily involved in various scientific meetings. So during this year, for example, we've attended the American Thoracic Society Conference, the European Respiratory Society, the International Congress on Lung Transplantation, and the American Chest Physicians in San Antonio. We've been publishing scientific abstracts at these meetings and will continue to do so throughout 2019. Here's an update from the ATS meeting back in May on some clinical trials which may be coming in 2019 in pulmonary fibrosis. In summary, while there were no huge big trials presented, there were a lot of important phase two trials presented. And um, I think we can be confident that there will be some significant phase three trials starting sometime in the next 12, either later this year or early next year, particularly with the, uh, you know, Fibrogen, Prometeor, Galapagos, Biogen and Prometic have all presented significant phase two uh, studies in the last 12 months or so and this is promising um, for bringing these studies forward to phase three so I think we can expect there will be significant phase three trials going forward but I think it also we can expect these trials will be more complex than before cannot just compare with placebo group and there's a very strong need to collect a holistic view of, of, of what the patient is going through so in other words to focus on subjective um, quality of life and um, impact of disease on the patient in addition to the spirometry endpoint which is classically used to determine progression of disease. So in summary there was uh, lots of uh, new studies presented all at phase two level at this stage but I think it's promising going forward that there will be phase three trials in the next while which will hopefully lead to significant advances in the treatment of the condition. That's all for now. We had a very good meeting and uh, thanks for listening. So our YouTube channel has frequent updates from various meetings like this. That was by Colin Edwards, who is our Chief Scientific Officer of Patient Empower, who designs all of our uh, clinical protocols and scientific studies with various academic medical centers. So just recently, we also had a video chat with Dr. Naftali Kaminsky, who's Chief of Pulmonary Critical Care and Sleep Medicine at Yale School of Medicine. And he also was talking about uh, his excitement about the, the level of new therapies that are coming to phase three clinical trials soon. But there's a lot of things that are happening now uh, that are exciting. Now, beyond this sort of almost well, you know, for patients with pulmonary fibrosis, if I tell them that something's going to be available in 10 years, that's not a big consolation, right? It's helped you. It's good to know. It's good for the family uh, and family members and others. But there's also things that are happening now. So if you look at it now, there's probably, I don't remember the number, probably 10 startups. There's numerous 
uh, phase two trials. I thought that the last year's uh, American Thoracic Society in May uh, was one of the most amazing conferences I attended because people presented three or four early stage studies that had very promising results. Um, rarely happens in any field, uh, let alone pulmonary disease. And what is interesting, so we are starting to see a little bit more targeted therapies. So molecules that will normalize the function of uh, monocytes in pulmonary fibrosis, other molecules that will potentially affect fibroblasts. We're starting to see this sort of targeted. Um, having said, but there's a lot of so as Colin and Naftali were saying, there's a lot of uh, companies developing new therapies and there's potentially five phase three clinical trials starting in next year for new treatments. But as well as just IPF, there's a lot of new uh, trials in other interstitial lung disease. For example, um, rheumatoid arthritis ILD um, there's a lot of studies uh, looking at antifibrotic medications in those areas. So whatever, whatever your type of ILD, this is an area uh, to really watch out for in terms of studies that are underway or new ones that will be starting in 2019. If it is something you're interested in, Patient Empower will be helping you in this area. So typically a clinical trial has inclusion and exclusion criteria. And common among those are your age, your diagnosis, your current lung function, and medications that you are using or not using. Um, so for us to be able to match you correctly to, to a clinical trial, if you keep your profile within the Patient Empower app up to date in terms of those factors, and also your medication record within Patient Empower up to date, we can better match you to a clinical trial. The other aspect where we can help match better is around your lung function. So those clinical trials typically match based on a percentage predicted FVC, forced vital capacity. So if you're using the spirometer connected to the patient power app, we can help better determine where you are for being matched to a clinical trial. If you want to use the spirometer that connects with the Patient Empower app, uh, you can find it on patientempower.com forward slash shop. And you can use the coupon code PFWarrior to get 30% off and free USA shipping. So to get more information, you can go to our website, patientempower.com. You can go to our support webpage, our support email address, support at patientempower.com. Our YouTube channel has a range of different videos on both how to use the app and also videos with Dr. Naftali Kaminsky, Colin Edwards, and various other uh, patient advocates in pulmonary fibrosis. You can reach us by telephone or by the support button in the app. And I would also encourage you to find us on Facebook where you will see lots of um, stories from other users who use Patient Empower describing how they use the app. Thanks for tuning in today. And if you have any questions, you can reach me, Eamon at patientempower.com or info at patientempower.com, the email address you see in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Thanks for tuning in.